<laughs> what, were you, what were you doing before you before you were arrested? What was your job, or what were you doing? Well, um, not not long before um, I was working at my family's restaurant. I had just moved back to the state. Um, some things didn't work out, you know, outside of the state. I was living in Utah with my sister. Then I went to Colorado, up to Alaska, back to Utah, and then ended up coming back for financial reasons and things like that. Um, and I was working my family's restaurant, you know, off and on, and doing other odd jobs and things like that, you know, just, just whatever. And um, my sister was working for R.J. Reynolds, and uh, we decided to open our own tobacco store. Um, and we were in the process of doing that when all of this happened. Uh, it was about a week before our grand opening. And uh, you know, I had a lot of money sunk into it. My sister's 401k, my business partner's 401k. Mine was mostly sweat equity because I didn't have a whole lot of money or anything. And uh, you know, I've worked as a subcontractor for RJ Reynolds while my sister worked for them you know, as, as a uh, contract. Uh, I can't exactly remember what the, her title was, but anyway, you know, I, I would been in the business. I think she, was. she was, yeah, sales rep. I did merchandising for a company that was contracted by them, so I, I did a lot of their, their uh, displays and setups. And, you know, living with her, I understood a lot of you know the tobacco industry. So we decided to open up our own tobacco store, and you know, just kind of looking forward to that. Um, and obviously, I, you know, in the meantime, I I grew my own marijuana. You know, I, I used marijuana for quite a long time. Uh, nothing, you know, nothing out of the ordinary. I was just a normal guy like anybody else. Uh, not a drinker, not a, you know, no alcohol, didn't do other drugs or anything like that. Just uh, always enjoyed the benefits of marijuana. Um, had a pretty nice place. Uh, it was, uh, we went out to check for packages one day at our store came back about an hour and a half later and the place was just full of cops and uh, the story turned out to be that while we were gone uh, management had informed uh, the maintenance to install fire extinguishers without our knowledge because their insurance was going to lapse that night if they didn't have those new up-to-date fire extinguishers in the place and so they violated our lease walked inside and the story was that this guy got all freaked out because, you know, he saw what he thought was an explosive in my kitchen, which was ridiculous because there's nothing to at all to indicate that that's what it was, you know. And, and he supposedly took a video that nobody could so, find. Yes, yeah, supposedly made this video of the inside of our place that was the cops never got a copy of, never did anything with, and it wasn't until over a year later that they told us that it was conveniently destroyed by the maintenance man dropped his phone into a bucket of pain. And, you know, and, and that was their probable cause to go in. To violate your well, constitutional Right, because they went into the house without a warrant. Um, and they, they claimed all this exigent circumstance, oh, well, we thought there was a bomb. And, you know, but yeah, he never bothered to call bomb squad or anything like And he's that. not a bomb expert by no, any means. No, not and at all. His, he his... supposedly had a class or two on it, but, you know, and, and the maintenance guy, said, well, he thought it was a bomb because of pipe bombs that he had looked up on the internet, which is very questionable, because why is he looking at pipe bombs on the internet? But uh, anyway, it wasn't a bomb at all. 